Thank you so much for joining us at 6 o'clock. Public school districts across the tri-state must track reports of bullying and make those reports public. But what are your child's rights if your student is involved in a bullying incident? And when are schools required to tell you, the parent? Nine on your side's Hillary Lake explains what you need to know to best advocate for your own children. Three families changed forever. All say their children took their own lives after enduring bullying at Fairfield Middle School. We've heard the family's pain, their questions, and few answers about how this could happen and what school officials knew and when they knew it. I do believe he would have said something to someone whether it be another child or an adult. This mom also finds herself searching for answers about her own son, but from a different perspective. Her first grader is accused of being the bully at a different school in Fairfield. I was heartbroken because, you know, I felt like he wasn't protected, you know, and I'm his protection since he's only six. Sharmia Wallace tells the I team she found out her son was questioned without her knowledge about his role in a bullying incident at Fairfield West Elementary during a phone call from the school principal. The principal said, um, according, you know, I want to talk to you about our findings in the investigation. Did you know what he was talking about? No, not at all. I said, what findings? She contacted the Nine on Your Side I team with questions about student and parent rights. How can you question a six-year-old, you know, without representation? You know, attorney, I'm, you know, I'm his mom or his dad. Wallace also learned her son's teacher was supposed to tell her about the incident when it happened, but didn't. She requested this letter from the school because that they dropped the ball, that I was not told um, about the incident. Fairfield school bullying policy says the school usually notifies parents or guardians after the school district's bullying officer verifies it's an actual case of bullying. That means acts of physical or emotional bullying have occurred on more than one occasion from the same student against another student. Technically, according to its own bullying policy, in the case of Wallace's son, Fairfield City Schools did nothing wrong with how it notified her or handled the case. But education attorney Carla Loon Leader tells the I team this example exposes a hole in Ohio's bullying law. It gives a lot of discretion and a, and, and a lot of gray area on what schools are required to do and what parents are entitled to know. The I team also checked bullying policies for the largest school districts in southwest Ohio, northern Kentucky, and southeast Indiana. Out of seven schools, only two, Lawrenceburg Community Schools and Campbell County Schools, make a choice to notify parents of any children involved in a bullying investigation right away. The other districts do it when the investigation is over, depending on the findings. The law is not specific on when they're supposed to be notified. Leader says this practice leaves parents in the dark. The I-Team reported last August that Logan Davidson's grandmother and legal guardian felt that way after he took his own life last spring after she says he was bullied at Fairfield Middle School. He would have said something to someone. I wrote, you will forever be in our hearts. The I-Team has also previously uncovered evidence to show bullying was a factor in Emily Olson's 2014 suicide. Her parents filed a civil rights lawsuit against Fairfield City Schools, claiming the school district knew Emily was bullied and covered it up, keeping them in the dark. And now Sharmia Wallace also feels left out after learning Fairfield school officials questioned her six-year-old son without her knowledge. What rights do parents have to know whether or not that's happening? Well, I think that the schools do have a lot of discretion to question kids without parents being there. Um, they, are, they are acting in loco parentis when the child is in their building. So they do have a right to question kids without their parents being present. Leader says families need to talk with kids about asking for a parent and their rights to remain silent. You need to do that in a way that they're still going to be respectful because you don't want to teach your children to be disrespectful to the adults that are in charge of them during the school day. Wallace says she's now had that conversation with her boy. Leader tells me Wallace also did something else right. Many schools advise their staff, call parents, don't email, don't put things in writing. Every time something happens, you should be documenting. Remember, Wallace asked for letters from the school to document what happened in her son's case. If a parent wants to create a paper trail, 
they can create a paper trail. How? If you have a conversation with a school person, if you have a conversation with the principal at the school because they called you or you called them, after you hang up the phone, send them an email that says, I just wanted to document the conversation we just had. You said this, I said this, this is what you said would happen. If this is not accurate, please let me know. If they don't let you know, then that is passive acceptance of what you're saying. If they do respond and correct you, then you've got something in writing that documents what happened. Wallace has also learned there's information she may never know despite asking about it. Do you know what people at the district office or whoever questioned your son asked him? No, they won't let me. They said they can't release those questions. Now she has to live with the decision she feels school officials made in darkness. It just hurts because my son is not a bully. While she knows other families are hurting too because of bullying and unimaginable loss. And according to a letter Sharmia Wallace says the school sent her, her son got what the school calls team intervention as a consequence for bullying. I asked the Fairfield School superintendent for an on-camera interview for this story. He tells me he can't comment on individual student cases. We do have his full statement on WCPO.com, as well as more information on what parents are entitled to from these investigations.